This show is brought to you by Ridley College. Hi, I'm Scott Harrower. And I'm Mike Bird. This is the now and not yet. What is the now and not yet all about, Mike? Well, this is a show where we discuss issues in biblical and theological studies. We talk about hot and button issues, do a few book reviews, have a bit of fun, and even a bit of, a bit of commentary on things about the Anglican Communion as well. That sounds great. Mike, what have you been working on this week? Well, I have been slowly and ever increasingly edging towards world domination. How is that going? Very slowly. I need to recruit minions. I need small people with one eye and have their own yellow costume. Um, now, is that because you're building some kind of a Death Star thing and because they're little, they'll fit on it? Something like that, but I just need my own little army and a bunch of you know, servants who will do my bidding at my request. Okay, and well... you don't have to speak English. Okay. <laughs> so today's topic is mentoring. It seems like everybody's into it. Justin Bieber has had a spiritual experience after being mentored by Christians. Universities are even pushing for it, secular universities, as part of wanting to form a student beyond merely giving them an education. Christians have been about uh, mentoring as well, and Christianity Today had two articles on mentoring last year. So it seems like it's the in thing, Mike. Um, what is mentoring? I think mentoring is when you, uh, when a junior person comes together with a senior person seeking guidance and counsel on their work, their life, their faith, their family. Do you reckon mentoring is something that has a warrant within Christianity? Is it, is it something that uh, can be justified from the Bible or is it just one of those trendy things that we've taken on from the oh, secular world? I think world? it's definitely there. If you look at the Apostle Paul, I think he was definitely a mentor Mm. to his two younger uh, colleagues, Timothy and Titus, yeah. uh, and, and perhaps even a wider circle of people as well. Uh, and if you look at some of the bishops in the early church, you get the feeling that they certainly did mentor other people uh, as well uh, in their leadership of churches in, in the various cities and areas. Here at Ridley College, we do the life and ministry groups, yeah. which is group mentoring. Um, and perhaps you guys don't know that Mike and I actually share a group. Um, I lead them in first semester, Mike leads them in second semester. Yeah, when I get into the group, we do a bit of, you know, get to know you kind of a thing, but then we begin to talk about gifts and vocation. And every week we spend time um, talking to and about, you know, one or two members of the group, and we try to ascertain uh, over a period of time, what are their giftings? What do they think their calling is? So it's basically providing some of the groundwork that will provide direction for the rest of their studies. Um, so yeah. what I do in the first semester is I try to get the uh, people in the group to think through some key questions. And these are questions that I've found very powerful in being mentored yeah. myself. What are the themes that you can see in your own life when you think about God's very obvious work? What are the themes and ways that he's worked most clearly? How has God shaped you as a person to this point? How is God shaping you in the present for the sake of serving others, that's very important, for the sake of serving others. And fourthly, how is God shaping the community in which you are ministering and serving? Uh, one aspect of mentoring that I really like, it's called the mosaic approach. And the mosaic approach to mentoring is, you don't just pick one person to be your mentor forever, yep. um, but you draw on lots of different people, yep. group settings, as well as individual settings and so forth. Um, why do you reckon that's a good model, Mike? I think it is it's good because it's very eclectic. Uh, but I mean, you're getting input from, from different places. You know, it might be a Bible study group you're uh, a part of, could be a, you know, a pastor of a, a church, or a, you know, could be a parental figure as mm. well. Mm. So you, you're more likely gonna draw on multiple sources to get mentoring and advice. One of the best mentoring things you can have is having some good role models and just observing them. Yeah. Observing how they treat other people, mm -hmm. observing what they do, how mm -hmm. they talk mm -hmm. to others. Mm -hmm. I think that that's simply, you know, looking at a good example can be one of the best forms of mentoring. And now for the top five reasons why John the Baptist would be a really bad mentor. Reason number one, he was not interested in inner city urban ministry. I mean, he's all out in the Judean wilderness. There's no coffees or cafes or museums there. How do you reach the city if you're John the Baptist? Number two, he quotes the Old Testament out of context. I don't think that's a very biblical model of mentoring. Number three, he uses foul language like brood of vipers. <laughs> it sure does. 
John the Baptist also went further than the Daniel diet. His model of eating is not to be replicated. Number five, he also rocked around in non-hipster clothing, which is basically, you know, a belt and camel hair. That's not good. That's not a good look. No. Hot off the press. Oh, 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 this is hot. It's hot off the press. It's a new book by Daniel Trier and Kevin Van Hooser. Who's Kevin Van Hooser? Really? You don't know? What plan have you been living on, you moron? I mean, you went to Trinity for crying out loud. How can you not know who Kevin Van Hooser is? Away with him. Give us Barabbas. Kevin is a leading North American evangelical theologian, and his speciality is theological hermeneutics. How do we take the biblical canon and how do we interpret that and apply it to the believing community? All, All hail, hail the, the KJV. KJV. This is an important book because Kevin Van Hooser and Dan Trier are writing in the context of evangelicalism, which is struggling under the diversification of the movement. That is, there's a whole bunch of perspectives on the Bible. There's disagreement on the doctrine of God. There's disagreement on theological method and the role of the Bible in theology. And let's face it, the evangelicalism now includes Donald Trump and Joel Osteen. I mean, that is a problem. Well, think about it. Some people also want to include Mormons yes. in evangelicalism. Or you could compare those who are like, you know, uh, the Gospel Coalition. Yeah. Uh, then you've got the, uh, the Missio Alliance. And then you've got other groups like, you know, Red Letter Christians. A lot of these go under the mantle evangelicalism. And they've got very different ideas about the way scripture should be uh, used and how it should function in the life of the church. Yeah, and let's remember the critique that's been leveled at the label evangelicalism. Mm. For example, we think of Carl Truman not wanting to describe himself as an evangelical anymore. Yeah, and you can hardly blame him. You can hardly blame him. In fact, our good friend, um, Gerald McDermott, when he was here, he says he just calls himself orthodox rather than evangelical mm. because the title has lost its meaning, which is very bad for me because I wrote a book called Evangelical Theology. <laughs> but I, I will, the rangers will rise. I would use this in an advanced prolegomena class. Um, and just to go through again, what they want to do is they want to help the church by renewing, retrieving and responding. That's the purpose of this book. So is this book a, a cross between method and manifesto for a contemporary, yes. uh, an orthodox uh, evangelical theology, as opposed to a mere cultural evangelicalism? Is this about a real, dare I say, Catholic evangelicalism moving forward? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, they use the term mere evangelicalism, yep. but they want to say that the evangelicalism that they're proposing is the richest form. So it's the kind of evangelicalism that you and I would yep. uh, try to model here at Ridley College. Evangelical, but Anglican and tap into the deepest traditions, yep. but also relevant to today and about promoting the gospel publicly today. So that's what they're on about. Uh, it is partly a manifesto, but there's a lot of great stuff on method. Oh, All hail the, the KJV. KJV. They use David Yeager's distinction uh, between judgments in scripture and theological concepts. And what's helpful about that, Mike, is that they're able to um, draw on the Bible and its many forms of literature in order to draw out the judgments within and then build theological concepts that capture those judgments. It's a great way of negotiating the relationship between the Bible and theology. So it's, it's a good for d moving beyond the biblical propositions to actually constructing a system of ideas that are interrelated and mutually interdependent. Yes, so the systematic aspect of theology comes uh, to the fore in this book and it's a real challenge for those of us who work in theology um, because they give biblical warrant for what they're doing Good. and they want to say that the church should reflect the scriptures and the vision that the scriptures has for us. This is an excellent book and you can get it wherever great books are sold. For now and not yet. And that's the end of our show this week. That's the end of the now and the not yet. And we've had a good episode. All, All hail, hail the KJV. KJV. I'm Scott Harrower. I'm Mike Bird. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like our Facebook page and follow us on social media for more laughs, news and reviews. See you then and God bless you.